Hi everybody! Welcome to Let's Talk About Jesus with Fever Adiba Wale. I'm so glad that you're here. If you're returning, welcome and thank you for subscribing and for watching these videos. Um, if you're if you're new, welcome and I hope that some of the things that will be shared on this platform will bless you. I encourage you, if you, if it has blessed you, to like, to share, and to subscribe. Today's my birthday! Yay! That's why I'm doing a video on Tuesday because I usually don't. I only post on Thursdays um yeah it feels good to be a year older and i'm super grateful to god this past year was crazy like from last year till this year actually like mid last year till this year was crazy but jesus took me through and i just want to share a couple of things that the lord has taught me as a result of the craziness i've been stretched it was really really difficult i found myself saying many times god help me god help me god help me um, and I like to start with that. That 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 sentence in itself, that prayer, God help me, is so powerful. It is so so powerful. Don't underestimate it. If you're in trouble and you don't even have time to speak in other tongues or do anything, all you can, what if you if you can, you know, if you can speak, I have encouraged you to say, God help me, God help me, God help me, you know. And God always comes through. The Bible says He never forsakes us. So he always comes through. He might not come exactly the way you want him to come, but he will come through. He will grow as a result of that experience, right? You will be a new person, right? For example, I can say that the people who started 2021 is definitely not the same person speaking to you. I have grown a lot, a lot. So never underestimate the place of God help me, you know, God help. I don't know how people who don't have an active relationship with Jesus survive. Cause this life is crazy hallelujah nothing another thing i have learned is the importance of god's word you know the scriptures in the book of psalms say that in his light we see light in god's light we see light god's word enlightens our darkness at some point in my life i felt like i was in darkness right i was surrounded by darkness and there are some things that only you and yourself and your jesus know the battle that you are facing you know your spouse might not know and in my case my husband might not have really known what i was going through but i knew the battle i was facing and in that i could say god help me and in his word so for example one 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 time i was having like serious um intrusive thoughts and one of the one of the lies from the enemy that kept coming to me was you will fall away you will fall away and i became so fearful anxious i was like god i don't want to fall away i was anxious until the lord led me to that scripture in isaiah where the lord was saying that i'll be your god all through your lifetime i will help you i will carry you along i will save you right I will keep you, you know, and just the promises of God, God saying he will keep me, God saying he will keep me from falling, God saying he'll be my God throughout my lifetime until my hair is gray with age, you know, he made me, he will care for me, he will carry me along, he will save me, and just repeating God's word to myself, that's so important, if you're in that place where you are in so much darkness and you don't know what to do, read your Bible, right? Because in his light, you are enlightened. In his light, your darkness gives way. Read your Bible and begin to repeat God's word to yourself. You begin to repeat God's word to yourself. That is spiritual warfare. In Africa, we have the idea that oh, spiritual warfare is only when demons come and attack us physically or when um, witches in their courtroom decides to fight against our destinies and things like that. But also, there's the spiritual warfare of our mind, right? In our minds. No wonder Mama just may have read the book on the battlefield of the mind right the bible tells us in the book of corinthians that we cast down every imagination every high lofty thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of god in our minds right the bible says that the god of this world in second corinthians 4 4 has blinded the minds of people so mind your mind is where the spiritual warfare is and i experienced that a lot in this past year the importance of guarding your mind in some African countries, we know that sometimes you find like um, security um, officers guarding vans, yeah, where you have like money. God wants us to guard our hearts like that. You know, the Bible says we should guard our hearts because out of it flows issues of life, you know. So we're supposed to guard, guard your, your inside peace, literally, guard your inside peace. And Satan will come and fight you, you know. I dealt with guilt, condemnation for things that were done before I came into the knowledge of Jesus. Before I became a child of God, I dealt with condemnation. And the true matter is that it's easy to, if the Lord teaches you some things and you don't have space to practice them, then it's just all talk. 
right? You're not able to practice the things that you're learning. So for me, in the last year, I learned to practice <laughs> some of the things that I have learned. And trust me, it wasn't beans. It wasn't a walkover. It was the help of the Holy Ghost that, that through his help that I survived. So I just want to encourage you, first of all, to pray you know god help me is enough if you're in a dear situation you don't know what to do but pray you know pray engage the lord in prayers right we communicate with the lord through prayers talk to him ask him for help god is not wicked god is not a taskmaster he's not looking so that you will fail he's rooting for you and he wants you to excel so secondly read your bible know the promises of god because the enemy will come. That's the thing. The Bible says all of us, our lives will be salted with fire. All of us. So everybody will go through something. But then how you go through it makes the difference. Will you pass it? Will you engage with all the things that the Holy Spirit has taught you? Will you ask the Lord for help? Because the scriptures also say that by strength shall no man prevail. Hallelujah. So how you how will you engage that situation? Are you going to go in your own strength and say, ah, this one, me, I can never do it. Say lie. It's a lie. It's God that helps us. So we pray, we read our Bible. Also meditation. Ah, that one. I learned the power this past year as well. Meditation. You know, speaking to myself the word of God. Sometimes I can just be busy and then Satan begins to bombard me. You, you know, bombard me with thoughts that are accus accusing thoughts or condemnation thoughts. Then I had to start meditating on God's word. You know, the Bible says, and the righteousness of God and Christ Jesus. So sometimes I might be washing dishes or doing a show and I'm talking to myself. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I am chosen. I am one of God. I am a child of God. I am loved. I am accepted in the beloved. You know, the importance of speaking to us, speaking God's words ourselves, you know, meditation. The Bible in Joshua 1, it says that this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. But you shall meditate on it day and night. So God wants, I'm not like an expert in meditation. I'm still practicing and learning. But that's one of the things that I learned in this year. Talking to myself in God's word. Speaking God's word to myself. Ensuring that I'm feeding my heart with God's word. Another thing I learned is to um, protect my mental health from things that are not, you know, are not it. There are some things that I... I avoid for my because I know that those things open the door for, for the enemy to begin to attack me. So I'm not as active, for example, as I used to be on Instagram or I've um, unfollowed some people <laughs> just because I'm protecting my mind and my mental health, you know, because that's important. That's part of guarding our hearts. Out of it flows the issues of life, guarding our hearts, you know. Also, before I used to see some, some things in my soul, in my heart that were not necessarily pleasing to the Lord. And I didn't know what to do with them. Now I know the importance of asking the Lord for help, right? So, so there are times that I've seen jealousy in my heart or envy or anger. And I didn't know what to do with it. I just said, okay, this thing is here. I don't even know what to do. With it. I know it's not right, but I don't know what to do about it. And I've learned the importance of asking the Lord for help and for mercy. Because at the end of the day, it is the Lord that changes us. It is through his word that he changes us. You know, if you don't ask the Lord for mercy, then how will you be changed? In his light, again, in his light, we see light. As we read his word, we become more like him. No one's in the New Testament, we are told that as we be behold his, him, we become like him. And we know that Jesus is his word. So as we behold the world, with word of God, we are beholding the Lord Jesus Christ. And we are becoming more like him. Hallelujah. So it's important that we ask the Lord for help, ask him to change us. You don't just pray to say, okay, Father, give me this, give me that, give me that. We pray that we look like him. We pray that we we that we um see as he sees, right? In in the book of Ephesians, we are told that our eyes will be enlightened. We pray that we walk worthy of him. Right? The Bible says which is not just enough to say, I'm a Christian and that's all I'm going to heaven. We work out our salvation with fear and trembling. We die to our flesh. Right? You know, so we pray that we look like him. We pray that we see as he see, sees. You know, those when I first um when I first became serious serious in my work with the Lord, I prayed for one hour and after one hour we read my Bible and pray. I wouldn't know what to do again. <laughs> and so my devotion life was just one hour. <laughs> um but but I felt, I still felt like, okay, but other people are praying like three, four hours. When I was here, when I was in Bible school, I would hear one of our Bible school um, instructors say, oh, he'll, he'll read the Bible all through the night. And I wonder, 
how why are people doing this but this year i learned the importance of it's not just asking the lord for material things yes god wants us to have material things but then it's not about that you know it's about it's about us looking like him right so another thing i've learned is that the main purpose of my life on earth my purpose is not necessarily to be a mother or to be a wife or to preach the gospel no it is to look like jesus i am on this earth and the lord can use whatever means he wants for me to look like look like his son jesus christ right it might be through suffering but in that suffering there's sanctification going on and i am looking more like jesus it might be through wells you know whatever method he wants to use it is his prerogative the most important thing is that i am looking more like jesus hallelujah so another thing i've learned is that i am on this earth to look like jesus i'm not on this earth to be popular i'm not on this earth to, to have an impact or to make an impact i am on this earth to look like jesus hallelujah so that when i see the lord jesus christ when he comes for us or when i leave my body i will not be ashamed when i see i will not be looking like something else like a beast or anything i will look beautiful as it is bible says as it is so we are in this world you know so i'm learning to come to the consciousness of that hallelujah one of one, one another thing else that I learned is the importance of the blood of Jesus. Ah, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus. When I was little, we used to sing this song. I play the blood, the blood of Jesus. And every time we sing it like in family devotion, my, when I was living with my parents, um, I would feel like there was something going on in the atmosphere, even though I did not know what's going on. In fact, it used to scare me the singing that song. I would feel that there was something going on. But I didn't know exactly what was going on. But in this season of spiritual warfare that I went through, I noticed that every time I have an attack or I hear the enemy telling me something, once I say, I plead the blood of Jesus, you know, or I, I say the blood of Jesus, I plead the blood of Jesus, that attack almost immediately stops, you know. And so I found that the blood of Jesus is so effective, you know. Of course, we are being told in the scriptures that the blood of Jesus, um, through by through his blood, he forgave us and purchased our freedom, right? Well, it's, for me, it, it has been amazing to see that practically in my own life, the blood of Jesus, the efficacy of the blood of Jesus. Oh, so such a wonderful, such such a wonderful. Um, one, I don't want to call it thin because the blood is not necessarily a thin, but such a wonderful item, for lack of a better word, at this point that we have. You know, so it's so wonderful that our Father give us that you know through his blood we have the forgiveness of sin you know and and we are free hallelujah so if you're struggling to through anything that is seeming too difficult for you begin to use the blood of jesus if satan tries to accuse you begin to use the blood of jesus hallelujah let's just do a quick recap because this video is getting really long this is just a quick a quick recap of everything i have said today first of all pray Ask the Lord for help. Pray. And don't just pray about material things. Oh, Father, I need this job. I need that. Mm -mm. Pray to grow in your work with the Lord. Even though, if you don't grow in your work with the Lord, Satan will rubbish you. That's just the truth of the matter. So we grow so that we know, you know, um, we we know the Bible says my people perish for lack of knowledge. We know where the enemy might come through, or we see, we see as the Lord sees, we know we, we are able to decipher, okay, this is right, this is not right, you know, this is how I fight, this is not how I fight. So it's important that we we ask the Lord to know, pray. The prayers in the Bible, there are prayers in the New Testament, Ephesian prayer, Philippian prayer, the Thessalonian prayers, there are prayers in the scriptures. It's not just Father, give me, give me money, give me good health. Mm -mm. There are other things to be prayed and things of the spirit to be prayed secondly read your bible how will you know the things to be prayed if you don't read your bible right also use the blood of jesus use the blood of jesus meditate on god's word god's word is so important for winning mental battles right many people are suffering from depression anxiety um fear because they don't know that there's a weapon they have satan has so downplayed god's word that people don't even read god's word they don't even meditate on god's word we are busy eating crumbs from devotion and when we can read the god's word ask the holy spirit to teach us eat the food right it's not reading bible is not only for pastors now eh? if you're a child of god read your bible please 
So reading God's word, meditating on God's word, speaking to yourself, telling yourself what God's word is about you. There are things the Lord has said about you in the scriptures. Read, you know. The other day I was talking to a group of people and I was reading um, the book of Mark where Jesus said that in my name they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will, if they drink any deadly thing, it will not hurt them. They will, you know, um, you know, the Lord said we will do certain things. And some people were like, oh, it's only for prophets. I'm like, no. Me, I'm telling myself, in, in Jesus' name, I, favor, I will cast out devils. Yes, because that's what the word of God says. There's nobody, nobody's name specifically. So I will put my name. He says in my name, they will. Am I not a disciple of Christ? I will. Hallelujah. So look at God's word and apply God's word to yourself. Hallelujah. There's also a place for building character. Oh, there's so much the Lord has stopped me in this in this past year. So much. I have so grown um i don't know i feel like i should do a part two of this um yeah if you think i should do a part two, actually leave a comment below and and we'll see but really i have grown a lot um and jesus has just been so so faithful god has been so good so um besides um believing god that this video has blessed you um i just encourage you also to just look through your life and just look back you know instead of complaining about where you are where you're not where you want to be Look back and thank God. Thank him for how he has brought you, you know, how he has brought you from where you thought, you know, like Travis Green sang, when my back was against the world, when my back was against the wall, sorry. And I thought it was over. God made it with literally. This has been my story this year. And I know it has also been your story. So I encourage you to sit back, think about the things that the Lord has done in this past year and begin to thank him. Thank him because God is faithful god is so good and he's faithful and he's kind i hope this video has blessed you if it has i'd encourage you to like to share and to subscribe and i will see you next week thank you for watching bye bye